Hey, what's up and welcome back. This is the Broken Geek. And in today's video, we continue with the Broken Geek Slab Detailing 101. Getting preview with Slab Detailing in short and concise lessons. So, in the previous video, we looked at the part, first part, or should I say the first section, which was basically the definitions. And in today's video, we now need to get to the general notes. So, without wasting too much time, let's get right into the video. Okay, so first things first, if this is your first time coming to the channel, please click the subscribe button. Also hit the notifications bell so that you get any notification whenever I upload a video. And without wasting too much time, let's get started with the general notes. So in the previous video, yes, we were looking at the definition of slabs, whatever the it is. We just wanted to get to the basics so that you can understand what we're going to be doing. So as I told you, we're going to be looking at conventional slabs, but yes, we're looking at conventional slabs. The first thing that we also need to do before we actually get to placing the steel or putting the bars in our slabs is to understand some of the general rules or uh, design elements that you need to know when you're doing with your slabs. So first things first with the general notes, these are some important notes that you need to consider before you get started. Number one is on the grade of concrete. So I have a video on the grades of concrete. If you want, you can check that link in the description below. But what you need to understand is most slabs are going to be packed at grade 25, i.e. M25. Remember, that is a cube strength. But according to the code or most big companies out there, what they want you to do is they want it to be grade 35 or C28-35. In case you don't know what C28 slash 35 means, click on the link in the video in the description below and you will take you to a video where I explain everything in depth. So please watch that video before you come to this one. But what you need to understand is the most developing countries and you know, a standard is your, your lowest grade should be a 25, but preferably your slabs should be grade 35. But remember, grade 35 is more expensive and is harder to work with but 25 is okay so as long as you design the grade 25 slabs to be able to carry whatever load that you're going to be putting on the slabs it's going to be okay all right now that we have talked about the grade link in the description below if you want to see the other video the next thing we need to talk about is the cover that is applicable to slabs so what you understand is that the cover is dictated by the code but uh in, the, in our case since, as I told you, former British colony, we're going to be using the BS810, close 3.3, and you can also go to close 4.12.3, and then also if you want, this is the BS8500, and the table is A6, A10 to A14, where they specify all the codes that you need to use. So even if you're using the Indian standards, just go to your code, see what it says about it. But one thing that I need to tell you from my experience when using the BS and also the SANS, the best thing is if it's going to be internal slabs, these are slabs that are going to be in-house. This is going to be sheltered from the environment. That is to say the slabs for your houses, your floors, whatever it is, as long as it's not the roof. The minimum cover that you'd want to use is 25 millimeters. And if it's going to be external slabs, sorry, I, I was supposed to say external. So what we're going to do is just EI. Let me just put, I don't know why I put internal there. So I'm just going to remove that and just put that as external. Right, so if they're going to be external slabs, let me just delete that. Okay, let me just put it that. So for if it's going to be external slabs, because they're going to be exposed to the environment, that is the water, weather, acidity, whatever happens, it will be 40 millimeters. And if it's going to be an underground slab, mostly it even starts. I think the minimum for anything that's underground is 50 in most codes, especially when you go into slabs and other codes as well. So this, remember, this is just the average. Check your code for the actual cover. And remember, it depends on the actual exposure conditions. And just to illustrate, for example, this is a 150 millimeter thick slab. So when they say 25 millimeter cover, what they just want to say is the distance from the top or the edge of the concrete to where your bars are going to start. So remember, it's not to the center of the bar the cover to the what they call there's a difference between cover and effective cover so what we're we just talking about we're just talking about the cover that is to the outer bar so to the outer edge of your bar this is what is going to be called the cover so if it's going to be effective cover it will be different this will be to the center of your bar so that is also different and it depends with the bar itself so normally what they just put is the cover so just remember when they're talking about the cover this is what the distance they're talking about i've illustrated for you to see and if you want, I think I have also the PDF version. You can also see if it's clear in PDF for you, that's good. If it's clear 
in the pads remember you can always use demo as well to see this it's okay now i think the next thing that we have talked about the cover and i think you now understand what the cover is and you know that is 25 millimeters for internal slabs and 40 millimeters for external slabs the next thing that you want to look at is the minimum and max reinforcement so for the minimum and the maximum reinforcement that comes in the slabs uh well for most part it's mostly just uh the minimum right so the minimum is going to be 0.13 percent of bh that is to say 0.13 percent of your total area i.e the cross-sectional area of the concrete this applies when nominal reinforcement is placed as well so for example it's it's all about just looking at a meter section uh, what i'm saying is isolate a certain section of your slab that is a meter run of your slab like i've done right now so as you can see this is one meter 1000 millimeters and this is 250 millimeters thick and just look at the number of bars that you've placed in this case we have six y12s at a distance of 200 millimeters center to center spacing which gives you 565 square millimeters per meter and remember we have two layers of this bar so that means 2 by 565 is going to be equal to 1130 square millimeters per meter i hope you're following but even if you're not you can always go through this again and see what i'm trying to say so remember six y 12s they give you this area and since they're going to be two so it's going to be two by that to give you this is the total area of steel that is in this section now the area of the concrete is obviously going to be 1000 millimeters by 1000 millimeters giving you 2500 no it's actually 250k square millimeters and thus the percentage of rebar in this case is going to be 0 0.1135 over 250,000 so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up my calculator first and we'll see what it actually adds up to so in our case it's 1135 divided by 250000 and once you do that then you multiply that by 100 to give the percentage and in our case it's 0 0.454 uh, four. so this is much greater than 0.13 percent so this one is okay so we have already uh, provided more than the minimum right and when it comes to the maximum uh, i only remember for columns it's four percent to six percent for slabs i'm not sure i might have missed that in the code what i'll do is i'll read just try and revisit but i'm, I'm not sure if there's a maximum uh, percentage i haven't seen or i haven't came across anything that says the maximum percentage of steel that you need to provide in a slab but one thing that we we're going to talk about this is the maximum diameter bar that you should provide in a slab so that is what is mostly specified in the code but when it comes to bs and sands there is no specified maximum is yet but i might miss this remember i am not i don't know everything i just know most of the things that i've done through my experience so these are the general notes that you should really uh, consider as well so remember we just want to keep this video short and concise i think we were supposed to do the illustrations but this one might take a bit of time so what we're going to do is we want to wrap it up here so this is going to be just a basic recap just remember the grade of concrete is mostly packed at grade 25 right and remember as long as you design for the laws for grade 25 it's okay but normally your slabs should be grade 35 c20 slash 35 so when you're doing commercial projects huge projects you're going to be using this grades because big projects you need strong elements and a lot of things come into play so it's for example in the Burj Khalifa you're not going to be using anything that's 25 um I mean, there were concrete parts there were steel parts so I'm just saying all the concrete elements you're not going to be using anything mostly you won't even be using anything less than 30 unless this is you know weak useless concrete for example blindings or areas where you don't really need that much strength but for anything that's going to be in the integral part of the building normally grade 30 is going to be your minimum now for the cover as well remember there's a difference between effective cover and cover so in the cover that we're referring to is going to be dependent on the code but just remember 25 millimeters for internal slabs and 40 millimeters for external slabs and like i said this is just the average check your code and this is the illustration for you remember i have the pads file and the pdf file that is available for you in the description below and then last but not least this is the minimum and maximum reinforcement that you should provide as i said the code is not explicit when it comes to maximum reinforcement but it is explicit when it comes to minimum reinforcement and what we did is we saw that is 0.13 percent and for example in our case where we provided these two layers uh, we saw that this came up to 0.45 which is greater than 0.13 percent so that is okay that is great you don't have to worry too much about that so without wasting too much time what i'm thinking is 
let's wrap the video up here so that we keep the video short and concise and we have your attention throughout throughout the entire video series so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the illustrations where i'm going to show you how detailing is actually done or is illustrated on paper we look at the sections on the top and some of the reasons why i say but this is what i recommend when learning so without wasting too much time thank you very much for tuning into the video if this is your first time please subscribe I know the delivery is different, but remember I'm doing videos on the road. So until next time, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.